for me, if somebody was just on the edge looking into Sabbath and Torah and feasts, I would say the Holy Spirit has brought you there. Amen. And don't be afraid because I was afraid because my head was full of all the traditional teachings and doctrines. And so I was confused. When you come to understand who Israel truly is, the Bible will come alive for you like nothing else. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Those who believe will do greater miracles than I have done. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, I am the way, Repent. the truth, the and kingdom the life. of heaven is here. Put down your nets and follow me. And action. Hi, and my name is Ian Jervis, and this is my wonderful wife. I'm Lisa. And uh, we live in Northern Ireland. Our journey kind of began in 2002. Mm. We were already born again believers. Yeah. Um, for, for a good 10 years before that. Um, but the journey began in 2002, where one morning Ian came to me. Yeah. saying that which he did every morning he'd have his prayer time and he'd come and share with me what the father had put on his heart and this particular morning yeah. he came to me saying i feel that i've just god at the time had told me to look at the biblical feasts and there's something about Sunday that's just not right. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was quite amazing because he re what, he, what he actually said was that um, he wasn't happy with everything that was going on on Sundays and he was just putting up. And I came to Lisa with this and she looked at me like, wow. <laughs> Where have, what have you been drinking, you know? <laughs> or smoking. <laughs> yes, it was just, it was just... Um... I, I, I knew what he was saying, but but as always, you know, I found it difficult to, to explain to Lisa exactly what, what he was saying to me, but I knew what we were doing. I uh, worship, our life of, wor of worship, um, but not only um, very, very shallow, but it, but it wasn't what was pleasing the Father. And that's that's really where it, where it began. And I had a word about the feasts and, you know, crazy thing, I've been going to church since I was five. I really knew nothing of the feasts of Yahweh. I knew nothing at all. Um, all I did was follow Christmas and Easter. It was the same for you pretty much, wasn't it? Yeah, we were both in traditional church. I mean, I, I was more involved not until the age of 17 for me really, uh, or 18. And I was kind of straight into the Pentecostal style church. Ian had grown up in a very traditional setting, yeah. Church of England, but then also gone to Baptist. What in America you'd call the Episcopalian, yeah. Yeah. So we both had, I'd had over 10 years and Ian had had a long time. So, so when Ian came to me telling me we needed to look at the biblical feasts, my mind immediately jumped to everything I'd been taught that those were now irrelevant, basically. Um, all the classic phrases, they've been fulfilled in Jesus. They, you know, Jesus is our Sabbath, Jesus is the feast. They were for Jews mm. and they're, no, they're not relevant to New Testament born again, spirit-filled believers. And if you start observing all those things, you are adding to your faith, you are um, coming away from Yeshua, falling away from grace and under law, you know, you, you, yeah. you guys I'm sure will know. Um, mm. So that's where my mind jumped to when he said, we need to study the feast. Yeah. I was like, 
but oh, has some religious spirit got hold of you or something, or have we have you lived at high altitude for too long, or <laughs> <laughs> have you lost your mind? It's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, we do laugh about this, but at the same time, I couldn't ignore it because, yeah. you know, by this point we'd been together a couple of years, and he prays faithfully every morning and used to hear from the father every morning and I always knew Still what do. he heard yeah. I mean some of the words that he would have when we were praying for specific stuff was just astonishing yeah um, so I had every respect for what Ian brought from that place of prayer I always did always have always will so I couldn't completely dismiss it but I was a little scared and a little bit confused. Um, but this then carried on and on day in, day out for a good year. Yeah. And and I was listening and, you know, beginning to yeah. become intrigued and want to learn more, but still kind of teaching on the edge. And then while we were pregnant with our son, Ian Jr., we, thought we randomly decided to take a three-month holiday in Alabama of all places. We just had this desire to visit Alabama and we looked for a church in the area because we thought well as we're there for three months we you know we want to visit a church take the kids along and the only church that we could find that was um, multiracial you know they, they welcomed all we said we'll go to that one so we went there and to cut a long story short, I spent the next 45 minutes trying to pick myself up off the ground emotionally yeah, because the pastor opened the meeting with Shafaz and he began talking about how the father had been speaking to him about the biblical feasts, eating clean and everything Ian had been saying to me for a year, this guy spoke in 45 <laughs> minutes and I was like, I'll never argue again. It was, <laughs> with it, it was so, I'll never argue with you again. It was so amazing because it, it was it it really was you know it, yeah. it really was a, a, a God given thing you know because then after after the service I, I went up to the pastor and I said you you've got to you've got to hear what we have to say you know so he took us into his office and he said he, you know asked us to explain and i told him everything that had gone on he just threw his arms up into the air and i'm like what, what, what's he doing you know and he just he, he just sat there and made, I totally gobsmacked and i said are you all right and he said yeah <laughs> he said he was told that there was a family coming from overseas who were going to confirm to him everything that he was saying and it was like wow we had to do that we had to Go, travel 6,000 miles um, for that to happen, but we did, you know. I have to cut in on this. So this just, just, my mind is being blown right now because <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it's fantastic because God confirms things all the time. He speaks constantly, but the fact that he had this pastor and you on the same word trajectory leading to the same truth at the same time and he says i'm going to grab people and i'm going to bring them here to confirm so that you keep on this path and keep teaching my sheep the truth that is absolutely beautiful. amen that is a good yeah. father that is a good father. Uh, yeah just it was just just incredible wow. things things that had happened uh, I, I discovered god's name wasn't god he had a name not just a title uh that was huge that was really huge. We've been digging about the, the Sabbath and nobody nobody, keep, nobody seemed to be coming up. You see, this is back in 2003. Three. Four. Four. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Long time ago. You couldn't you couldn't Google so you know, you you type in Yahweh or Yeshua or whatever and you'd give you know, like you know you see how many results you get, like millions now. You'd get like ten. So you, we did we weren't finding answers and this was the thing for us we had to search the bible we for had ourselves. to actually find <laughs> how inconvenient we had to find answers in in prayer and in, in, and in the scriptures we got called legalistic you you name it 
I mean, because we were on fire. We, we were. I mean, it was like getting born again, you know? Again. It, again, <laughs> just amazing. And so we went from a place of Ian having to kind of drag me along to us both being fully yeah. invested. And um, we just carried on searching, yeah. studying, praying. It's a miracle in itself, you know, uh, yeah, the, the things that have gone on. We've seen miracles happen in, in and people around us. I believe that that journey to Alabama in itself was, was huge. It, it was it was a massive thing. <laughs> I got I got to tell you this. Father told me once. He said, "Ian, you're called to find the lost in the church." I was like, "What? The lost in the church?" It was meaning people like us, like you guys, yeah. like like that many, pastor many who who were they already loved yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. Or was you know calling him Jesus at that time, um, but they hadn't come to that fullness of the journey of the narrow path, the ancient path. Yeah, one thing that was mind blowing for us, but it really it was when we we discovered that we were we were Israel. Because that was the stumbling block for me. It, it, I just kept to and fro in between. It clearly says it's just for Israel. Yeah, and I'm not. Jewish, so you know, I, I was just stuck on that for so long, and I'm, you know, because every, everybody that you we approached, they would say, "Look, I will show you." It's Jewish, and that you know, you, you could open scriptures and read that this was given to Israel, and it, it we came to 2014 and heard a video by Passion for Truth, Jim Staley, talking about who Israel actually is, and you know, he took us through the fact that. Israel contained not for a start not only one tribe but 12 who ended up all scattered throughout the earth that was great that was awesome I mean that was quite a revelation to me to realize that you know e even the native born Israelites were far more than one tribe of Judah they were whole 11 others but then the defining moment for me was when we're told that the foreigner will be as native born Israelite and the same law applies to native born and foreigner. And I immediately connect that with the New Testament scripture, which says there is no Jew, Gentile. We're all one in Messiah. So there were suddenly all these confirmations that there isn't a Gentile church. We're all one, we're all Israel. So that officially means the whole Torah is relevant to me because I am Israel. And to be Israel makes me his family, you know, the family of Israel. And, you know, if you forget, for example, you guys, you know, when you adopt a child, they become your family yeah. and take on your customs and your Absolutely. lifestyle. And, you know, we become the father's kingdom, which, the, yeah. which is Israel, along with all of its, That's right. its covenant. Laws. I mean, I was so stubborn, you know, because every time I saw the word Israel in, in the scriptures, I immediately associated it with that little strip of land out in the Middle East, and that's where it, where it was. It wasn't, for me, it was like, it was the answer, the whole, the Bible just came alive. It was like, wow, this is, this is you know, I'd heard people say, the Bible is a love story, and my word, it just it just all came alive, and it was just just incredible. I mean, we, we we suddenly saw passages like the prodigal son that we've we all have known and loved for years suddenly meant so, something, and the Valley of the Dry Bones was oh wow, and I finally understood these two trees being twisted together. You know? <laughs> it's like wow. All these things suddenly meant something, and it was it just took. I think that that was the biggie. Yeah. It was the really real big one, even though we'd been kind of build, building up to that. When when we realised that, and we truly in our hearts knew that, you know, everything that that we were reading in the in the scriptures was was relevant to us. It was just wow, and, it all and it, changed. It was it was Israel who were divorced and not even 
kind of allowed to be in covenant anymore. We were that Israel who were divorced and not allowed to enter into covenant and Yeshua yeah. came for so much more than we realized. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we'd always known we were Israel and we were the adulterers. And he, when he came, he took upon the curse and the punishment of adultery on our behalf, mm. which just blew my mind. Yeah. He took our place literally and made us, as, as the scripture says, like a virgin again, and made the way to allow us to return to the covenant, yeah. to, to put our wedding ring back on, not to run away from it and be wanting to trample all over it and say that's no longer relevant anymore, but instead we were finally allowed to, to observe the covenant yeah. again and receive the blessings of that covenant. And that was that was just huge for yeah. me that you know his 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 blood his sacrifice was to bring us back to the Torah the ancient path. Yeah. And as I as this was revealed and opening up in my mind and my heart, oh my word, I've wept so many times <laughs> while reading the scriptures. Yeah, we're both crying. That's for certain. <laughs> the understanding is just so much um, bigger, fuller now. Um, not saying that everything I believed as a, as a Christian, you know, as a Christian believer was wrong, but it, I feel like I almost used to have a 2D version and now I have the 3D. Shallow. Yeah. Um, when I was born again, I kind of was put onto that, the beginning of the path, hmm. but I stayed there for 10 years and something inside of me was hungry, knowing that there was more. I never knew what, but I just knew there was something. And what happened when, when this whole understanding about the covenant and Torah, Yeshua's sacrifice opened up, I feel I started to move finally yeah. along that path. So I'm not saying I wasn't saved or, or that my love for Yeshua was lacking before I understood this, because it wasn't, I, oh my word, I, I breathed for him, you know, yeah. even back then, and there was miracles in my life, even when I called him Jesus and didn't know his true name, and, you know. Um, but it's true, but, but you know, we've just, seen... It's like a whole other level, Lord. Yeah, thing. that's it. We, mm -hmm. we, you know, and Yeshua says that we'll see greater things, and I really, I really believe that, because the things we see are, are huge they are they are totally transforming life changing yeah it took us ages for the penny to drop that we were israel oh yeah, yeah. and for a... and even for us to begin observing sabbath and feasts took years and i mean one year we celebrated the feast of tabernacles in it was either september or october that year and then three months later we had a christmas tree up yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it That's was, how messed up we were. You know? <laughs> it was just just took us such a long time. In 2007, I went onto a course studying nutrition, and, but from a biological perspective. And part of this course, you know, I, I was reading about the foods which are worst and most toxic to the human body. And I read this list that anything from a pig, anything shellfish, or oyster, you know, um, and I'm like. This is the stuff that the Bible says isn't food. It matches up perfectly yeah. with, with this nutrition information. And that was another just defining moment yeah. for me anyway, realizing that the whole Bible was relevant. But even after that, yeah. I was still kind of, you know, we were still in that place thinking, but, it, but it's not the whole Torah. Okay, we know yeah. his real name isn't Jesus and God is just a title. Um, we know we should eat better, but it can't mean the whole tour is relevant. So, I mean, the yeah. angels must have been like, to be fair, um, we had we had nobody. There, there was un only us that we knew of at the time, but we knew there was so much more than what the Christian church was giving us. To be quite honest, the fathers brought us through that we find that it's such a help because we can relate with so many people in so many different ways. We can see people that are making mistakes and we know where their heart is. And we are able to 
if you like, love people through it in a way that I think if we hadn't have seen those things, we wouldn't be able to. But the amazing thing is, it, it's like we went through the phase of um, trying to tell all of our Christian brothers and sisters and family that, hey, Torah is relevant for today. Yeshua taught Torah. Do you know um, his name's not Jesus? Ian gave a great analogy to <laughs> me years ago when, when he said, look, if, if you were, if you want to go and feed the ducks or the birds at a park, you you go and you break the bread up and you scatter it gently. You don't take a whole big loaf and wing it into the park screaming, bread, you know, eat it. <laughs> or, and it, at the same time, you don't you don't try and feed a, a newborn baby meat and so on. And it, it really helped me after coming through that phase of trying to tell everybody and convince everyone of this. I came full circle to where I started as a Christian, realizing that above all, we need to love people. We obviously we love Yahweh, and the Torah simply tells us how to do that, and the Torah tells us how to love people come across people who, you, you know, ha have slightly different variants in, in, in his name and, and things like that. But none of these things really matter to a, to a large degree, other than that people are genuinely trying to be obedient to him, you know, and that these are the things that really count. It's all about heart. If we try and force our opinion on, onto them, I think it's, yeah. uh, you know, I believe more in I'm a, I'm a farmer by, by in my background. We sow a lot of seeds and in sowing seeds, we let Father water those seeds and he brings the sunshine and he does all of those things himself. And we're just there to kind of pull a few weeds out here and there, you know, and let the Father and the um, Holy Spirit do the, re do, do the rest of the work there. And, uh, you go on this big, long journey. Yeah. You know, because once you once you do have the revelation that the whole Bible is still relevant for today, yeah. it's just like when you were first saved, you wanted to go and tell everyone. Yeah. And I think then the second phase is you then turn your attention to the other people who are following Torah and you tell them how to do it right because they're not doing it right. <laughs> they're not saying the name correctly. They're on the wrong calendar. <laughs> There's no way Don't Sabbath that, can man. start in the evening, you know, just you name it and then you realize mm -hmm. you know the holy spirit says there's hungry people down your street <laughs> there are children in other countries who don't even have a bed right now and they don't have a mother and a father that's right and you're sat there being a keyboard warrior on facebook grow up yeah and go and do something and we learned that that's torah it's it's loving people it's doing something i mean the sabbath for example we're told the Sabbath and the feast are like a mark on our hand and forehead, amazingly. Those are really important. But if I have my home perfect on Shabbat and I have my menorah lit and, and I've, you know, the home's clean and, and I'm studying for six hours on Saturday, but then I go and hurt someone with my words on Sunday on Facebook, I, I've just torn down the whole Torah. We learned this some years back, I don't know if you can see it there, but when Lisa looks at that, what do you see, sweetheart? Nine. Uh, it's, she's wrong, because it's a six. Right. Yeah? So who who is right? We, we, we learned one thing was that Father will teach people um, at, a, at such a different rate. But I think what he's teaching is because, you know, I believe that the Father has Ian where he wants him right now and the Father has me where he wants me right now. There's a reason we're seeing this differently because am I gonna argue and fight with you over this or am I gonna hold your hand and love you and say, I'm actually should be saying to Ian, don't you move from there and don't let me try and, Force because it. I'm not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally, I'm in a place now where I don't care what shape earth you live on. I really don't care what day you Shabbat. I am so excited that you Shabbat. I'm so excited that you pursue the feasts and his name. You know, that's, and in the meantime, what can I do to make a difference in somebody's life yeah. today? Yeah. While I'm pursuing the truth in the Father. Yeah.
what can I do to make a difference? I don't think he's going to say, well done, you you taught that person that Sabbath begins at sundown. <laughs> that was really, you know, they really needed to know that. I don't believe those are the things we will get the well done for. Who did we feed? Who did we clothe? Mm -hmm. Who did we love when they needed love? I think you're you're circling around a really profound point. The whole the whole goal of Torah, the whole goal of believing the whole Bible is to know the entirety of the word of the God we serve, of the Father yeah. that we call. Yeah. Yes. Of the one who yeah. looks to us and says, My son, my daughter, you know. Yeah. We are the children of this king. So we should get to yeah. know him as much as we can as as accurately as we can and falling into that relationship like literally trust falling into that relationship with him means just spirit and truth and not not turning someone else away because they're not where we are now just like we didn't used to be i really enjoy listening to your story this is beautiful um we're learning yeah we're learning stuff. she's over here taking notes <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow because yeah, we're still we're new to this yeah also i mean yeah. 2020 for us and and it was it was the same thing we, we didn't even know i'm not going to go into it too much because we have our testimony video and so but but it all oh, started yeah. from keeping shabbat and we didn't even understand it in the bible at all we didn't even know why we were doing it he just put that in us to be like this like super strong conviction, you need to give me a day. And we thought it was supposed to be Sunday, of course, back then, but we worked at a church. And so we're like, well, yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess we'll do it on Saturday, not even realizing that's the right day. And then later on it became, you know, Friday night to Saturday <laughs> night. And, but it was just beautiful. And because we did that then, he started teaching us and blessing us because like we made that first choice. And then we just started learning from there it was just like boom and and i love hearing that he he told you in like that was your time with him he revealed the truth to you and that just makes me feel so much more like at peace that like i don't have to bring the truth to everyone like it's not my right. job it's his that's right life. and well that's what we, that's what we eventually learned <laughs> took, a, took a while for us to really get that until that day we stopped and said okay who taught us who brought us to this yeah. place yeah what was it was it what did we hear somebody preach or you know was it something like that and it was n none of that nobody taught this to us nobody. nobody convinced us that we needed to you know follow tour and, and yeshua said something interesting he talked about how and i know he's talking about himself but at the principle of it is so perfect mm -hmm. he said a seed has to fall into the ground yeah. and die yeah, yeah before life comes forth yeah. you know so sometimes even the seeds we sow that look like they've just come to nothing they're just underground and breaking yeah. open and one day we'll see life yeah there's people who are watching this who are just like okay this is maybe they're new maybe they've never heard this before maybe they have heard it before and they're on the fence so just what is what would you what would you say what would you say to people watching this Shakespeare said a phrase which has stuck with me for many, many years, and that is this, that a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Mm. So I will never, ever try to convince anybody of anything. I wouldn't, wouldn't even attempt to do that because it's, it's, a, it's a waste of time. I don't want to waste my time and I wouldn't want to waste somebody else's time either. What I would invite somebody to do is just to look at the things that we're talking about. Why, my, my biggest question is that, why would, if, if Yeshua is the son of God and he is God, why would he do away with his own word when you come to understand who israel truly is the bible will come alive for you like nothing else but i honestly believe that your life 
will turn upside down for sure. But the blessings and the promises that are there in Deuteronomy 28, that probably most people have, have read, pertain to his children, pertain to the children of God, pertain to Israel. So we better be part of Israel. You know, you're either grafted in or you're native born, whichever it is, you are Israel. And if you don't think you're Israel, I'd, I'd, I'd suggest that you check that one out. For me, if somebody was just on the edge, looking into Sabbath and Torah and feasts, mm. I would say the Holy Spirit has brought you there. Amen. And don't be afraid, because mm. I was afraid, because my head was full of all the traditional teachings and doctrines. And so I was confused. I promise the Holy Spirit has brought you here. And those questions that you have and that stirring inside, I had a lady say to me once, I don't know why, I just feel intrigued by the feasts and the Sabbath, and I don't even know why. So, and yeah. I said, that's him. You are saved by grace through Messiah's blood alone, not by works, not by law. That, that would never save you. He alone has saved you, but his spirit will always lead you from that place to obedience to the Father because he's leading you to life, to blessing to abundance. All my confusion came through Paul's letters and not because Paul's wrong and not because Paul made any mistakes, but because Paul's words have been misunderstood by unstable people. I was one of those unstable people that missed what he was trying to say. And I distorted his words and fell into the error of lawlessness just as 2 Peter 3. One day when I was crying after all my questions about, is this relevant? Is, is, am I supposed to live Torah? I felt I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, don't read anything else today other than Yeshua's words, is what I heard. Yeah. And I went and read the words in red. And I thought, Paul is awesome, <laughs> but I, I don't understand him right now. The one person I will bet my, you know, risk my life on is going to be only the words for my Messiah. Mm. And at the end of the day, I've never seen Yeshua turn away anybody who lives Torah. No. I can't find him say, you practiced the law, you fool. I came to set you free from it. I can't find him say that anywhere, but I can find him say, no, you can't come in here because you didn't practice the law. Away from me, you who practice Torahlessness, lawlessness, you rejected the commandments. I do find him say that. You know, you won't get all your answers today or even tomorrow, but let the journey begin today and, and just open your heart to the Father and say, teach me. Yeah. Teach me. Give me ears to hear your word. Give me a heart to receive your word and just let him, let him take you and lead you on that journey. And I wouldn't Amen. pretend that that journey is all going to be perfect, but that doesn't mean you're going the wrong way, you know. It's a narrow path. It's a very narrow path. And that's why so few venture onto the narrow path because it, it's tough. In fact, there's a scripture which says, narrow is the way that leads to life. life. That, that, that word narrow is actually translated tribulation. Life tribulation is the path that will lead you to Yeshua. I just, I kept getting chills. It's making me feel all emotional and I'm not even like that wow. person. And I'm just like, I'm oh holding back, I'm holding back tears over oh, here. It's so good. And oh, I, oh, wow. Well, thank you. And you know, he, he is going to bring the right people to watch this video. And if you're watching Amen. this video, then you are he, the right person. You are someone that, that he brought, like Lisa said, the Holy Spirit led you here to watch yes. this video. I would just love it if, if one or both of you, if you would just pray for people that are watching this. Yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we just come to you in your shoes. And Father, I pray that you just touch the hearts of the people that are watching this video right now, Father God. Just touch them, Father. Let them know the reality of you. Let them know who you are, Father God. Let them know who they are. Let them know how much you love them, Father God. Father, your Torah is life. Help them to choose life, Father God. Oh, Father, we praise you. We bless your holy name. 
For you are the one, the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel, the Most High God. And we praise you, Father. Father, I just pray that more and more people come to you, come to know the reality of Torah, of who you are, Father God. So we praise your holy name. We lift you high. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. You guys are such an inspiration. It's just amazing yeah. to, for us to see well done. Um, people coming to Torah mm -hmm. and growing so fast. You know, like as, as we said earlier, our journey took so <laughs> long. We were so stupid, <laughs> just so slow. <laughs> and then people like you are coming along and just mm -hmm. hit the ground running. And, and it's like you're you're in a place that took us five, 10 years to, you know, yeah. to get to, it's just- But know this, incredible. we compounded your your 12 years of mistakes down, like we made them all, but we just did them in a much shorter period of time. <laughs> really <laughs> good. <laughs> That's incredible. Much more vigor and much more- <laughs> Ian, I know you've written a couple of books. Yeah, let's plug those books. Um, Like, yeah, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. There's, there's two books that I've done. Well, I've written more than two, but these particular ones are The Ark and The Ark 2. And they just are literal experiences that we have witnessed. Some some amazing stuff. Or well, they've been dreams or... But, yeah, or, or dreams. So they... But it, but it's written in, in, in a story, obviously. It's, it's um, you know, we, we class it as, as fiction. But the, these books just... Mm. Just, just just give this picture and this story of somebody making that journey. We just wanted to give people that inspiration and encouragement mm. and just show them the beauty of this journey to Torah, that it, that it isn't anything frightening. This isn't the father trying to lead you into um, religious bondage. This is the father trying to set you free yeah. to, you know, to pluck you out of the enemy's camp and put you in his safe in the boundary mm. of the Father's kingdom. They are available on Amazon. Okay. Barnes and Noble. Can you do international shipping? Like we can... We yeah. Can. Okay. Yeah. Someone has questions and they want to talk more with you guys. How do they get a hold of you? I think probably uh, Facebook is the easiest. Look for Lisa Jervis or Ian C. Jervis, which is me. Or we ha our page there is... Ian Jervis, author page. That's yeah. Um, well, thank you guys so much. And this is, like I said, this has been truly wonderful. We're going to talk again very soon and we're getting connected on Facebook now. And uh, yeah, I know we are still going to have questions and stuff to to talk with you guys about. So we're definitely going to yeah. have to do this again. Anytime. Um, thank you. All Bless right, you guys. Shalom. 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.